We're back again, bringing you rare and unique fruits from around the world. Coming up on this episode of Top 10 Fruits You've Never Heard Of, Part 11. Number 10, Beauty Berry. Grown on a small deciduous evergreen shrub that grows up to 6 feet or 2 meters tall, the beauty berry produces white to pinkish flowers that will develop into these bright purple berries. Measuring 2 to 5 millimeters in diameter, this fall season berry will last well into the winter and be an important food source for birds when there isn't much to eat. Native to East and Southeast Asia, which is typically not where berries grow, can also be found in North and South America, Australia, and Madagascar. This highly astringent berry doesn't taste great, has a similar but not quite as bad taste as the porcelain berry which we covered in a previous episode. Mostly an overpowering bitter taste with mild sweetness is present in this berry, which are typically used for making jams and not much else. There is another unique, useful function of this plant. The leaves contain a poison that can be used to stun fish, which makes an easy day of fishing. Used in traditional Chinese medicine, the beauty berry is most commonly used for treating inflammation and bleeding disorders. Side effects aren't known from the consumption of this fruit, as it isn't consumed regularly in any large amount. Some people have experienced slight nausea from eating them. The essential oil created from this berry has been found useful at repelling insects. Number 9. Kwai Muk. Native to southern China, this lumpy, bumpy orange fruit is a part of the Artocarpus family, which is most famously known for the breadfruit and jackfruit, which we've covered in previous episodes as well. Grown on a large evergreen tree up to 15 feet or 4.5 meters in China, this fruit has been found to thrive in Florida, where the tree can reach up to 25 feet or 7.5 meters in height. Cultivated primarily for local consumption in Florida, this tree not only provides a source of food, but a beautiful aesthetic evergreen tree. Ripening from August to October, the Kwai Muk fruit is a velvety skinned fruit that ripens within one to three days, making it not viable for commercial production. The red flesh on the inside is a good indicator you've picked a ripe one to eat. Being a member of the Autocarpus family, latex will be present when unripe, just as with the jackfruit. Being yellowish to orange on the outside when perfectly ripe, a green colored Kwai Muk will be unripe and overly sour. If you wait too long, they'll become overripe and have a fermented taste to them, just as a pineapple has. Inside, a handful of seeds will be found that should be spit out. It's important to note that while the seeds shouldn't be consumed, the skin can, unlike a jackfruit. They have a sweet yet tart flavor similar to an apricot with sour elements of a citrus fruit. Being juicy and full of fiber, the Kwai Muk is a tasty fruit that can be enjoyed fresh, dried, or preserved with salt and sugar syrup. Number 8. Rattan Fruit first thing that comes to mind when you hear the word rattan may be the wicker-like furniture and weavings that comes from this climbing palm. Despite all the creation that is done to the stems of this palm, it actually produces a fruit as well. There are 40 different varieties with some of them not being edible. Within the edible varieties are multiple different looking rattan fruits that have different size spacing and shape of scales on the outside of the fruit. The snake-like skin of this fruit is similar to that of salak or snake fruit as they are in the same general family. Among the tallest rattan is the Latuko variety, which are harvested by placing a primitive ladder next to the tree and cutting off the entire branch of rattan at once. Found in the Philippines and India, this fruit isn't commonly consumed anywhere really, even by locals. Offering a comparable experience as biting into a lemon, sour will overwhelm your taste buds. On the inside is a large seed not offering a lot of flesh to enjoy. This isn't the case though with the Latuko variety, which is seedless. Chewing the seeds apparently has a similar buzz effect, that of six cups of coffee as beetle nut. Available from April to September, the rattan is being planted as a tree to reforest certain areas of the Philippines, slowly increasing in popularity as a local food to eat. Number 7. Kwandong The desert Kwandong, or native peach as it's also referred to as, has multiple different names coming from different indigenous groups. This hemiparasitic plant, or one that can photosynthesize using the root system of another plant, is found in the central deserts and southern areas of Australia. This tall shrub, up to 20 feet or 6 meters tall, produces a green fruit that will turn red when ripe. Enjoyed by the locals of Australia, the Kwandong is also a staple fruit of the Australian emu population. Commercially it can be found throughout the southern regions of Australia. It is a tart flavor like a peach or apricot with a large seed on the inside. An unusual find in the fruit kingdom, the Kwangdong has a substantial amount of fat per fruit with over half its weight being fat. Being high in vitamin C and good for the skin, this fruit has the ability to scavenge free radicals from the body. 
Number 6, Osange Orange. This spherical, lumpy, bumpy fruit measures up to a half a foot in diameter and comes from a tree in the mulberry family. The name comes from the Osage Native Americans who would use the wood from this tree to create bows and clubs. Other names for this fruit are hedge apple, horse apple, monkey ball, and mock orange. When cutting into one, sticky white latex oozes out. The woody-like pulp is tough and an unpleasant flavor, much like a watermelon rind mixed with a cucumber. The oblong seeds in the middle, which are edible, are the most desirable part of this fruit by both humans and animals, most notably by squirrels. Extracting them from the fruit is a painstaking process which yields a tasty seed which has a flavor reminiscent of sunflower seeds. Seeing how most creatures won't eat this fruit, it's believed that extinct animals like the ground sloth, mastodon, and mammoth ate this fruit and spread the seeds around. Many people claim this fruit will repel insects by chopping it into chunks and placing it around the area of which you want to keep them away. Number 5. Santa Claus Melon Initially named Pierre de Seppo in Spanish, which I'm sure that was a terrible pronunciation of, translates to toad skin. This melon was renamed to Santa Claus Melon because of its long shelf life, usually until Christmas. This football shaped melon has spotty dark and light green skin on the outside with pale yellowish white flesh on the inside. This melon gives no indication of ripeness like many others do with scent, which leads you to look for wrinkling brown spots and a good dose of luck to know when it's properly ripe, offering a light and fresh mix of a honeydew and a cantaloupe with the flavor leaning more towards the cantaloupe. It has a very dense and juicy flesh with more liquid than the other melons, yet it's lower on the squishy, slimy side of melons. While still firm, it's not nearly as crisp as a hami melon. They're eaten raw, added to fruit salads, tarts, sauces, and sorbets. Able to keep in the refrigerator for two months, this melon prefers warm climates to grow. Being a melon of the cassaba type, which originates from Turkey, the Santa Claus melon is cultivated in South America, Spain, and the southern United States. Number 4. Kiwi Berry Measuring the size of a large grape, this baby version of the kiwi has no fuzz, a green exterior, and is much more of a delicate fruit. Native to Korea and China, the kiwi berry has long been grown in New Zealand, since 1902 to be exact. Being a cold hardy kiwi, the kiwi berry is one of the few tropical type fruits that will grow in cold northern climates. Multiple different varieties exist that will come in different sizes and different colors, with some tinted a reddish color. The one we see here is called Isaiah, which is a self-fertile kiwi berry but benefits from boosted pollination being planted next to a pair of male and female arctic cold hardy kiwis. Ripening in the fall, as the kiwi berry develops, it will be rock hard and quickly transition into a soft yet delicate fruit as it's ripe. Their unpredictable shelf life hasn't made them a viable commercial crop, but you can find them once in a blue moon at Whole Foods for top dollar. Rich in vitamin C, A, E, potassium, fiber, iron, and calcium, this little nutrient powerhouse tastes sweet and sour with a nice amount of tartness to it. Packing very strong kiwi flavor, more than a kiwi, they'll tend to be more sweet and less sour the more ripe they are. A rare but tasty treat that shouldn't be skipped if the opportunity arises. Number 3. Snowberry an elegant name with a nasty secret. This berry also goes by waxberry or ghostberry. I'm not sure if ghostberry is in reference to the pale white color or from people dropping dead from how bad this berry tastes. There are 15 different species, with all but one being native to North and Central America, the other is native to China. Packed into tight clusters of white berries with a grainy texture on the outside, the inside offers a slightly juicy cotton candy-like visual. Sometimes the snowberry will have a pinkish hue to it. Despite its appetizing look, this berry, while edible, is sometimes called famine berry due to its mealy, bitter eating experience. Tucked deep within the depths of the bitter overload are delicate and pleasant hints of winter green. Each berry has white flesh with two hard seeds inside that are as tough as a bank vault, well probably not, but strong enough to lay dormant for 10 years before sprouting. Should be noted too, eating the seeds tastes exceptionally bad and should be spit out. These berries are best enjoyed, cooked or made into a jam that you'd give to someone you don't like. The saponins, or toxic compound which is present in many foods we eat, are a little bit on the high side with the snowberry, which doesn't affect adults all that much, but will cause children to vomit, get nausea, and diarrhea. Number 2. Jan Cooperus Crabapple 
Ranging anywhere from 10 to 40 feet or 3 to 12 meters tall, this ultra rare crab apple was discovered by a Dutch nursery owner in the Canadian province of Alberta. While usually a rare fruit will have a small region it comes from, this crab apple only has one tree it originates from. Slowly it has been grown and sold by local nurseries, but it's still very rare to find. So rare in fact if you search on YouTube there are exactly zero search results for it. Luckily for all of us, my neighbor has one, which is how I got my hands on it. The Jan Cooper's crab apple is a very small red apple, which can apparently turn purple, with a powdery yellowish to white flesh inside. While the inside is very greeny and powdery, it has a very nice sweet and tart taste to it. Not just a normal crab apple, this little fruit has what could be described almost as an apple pie taste to it. Best eaten when they're firm and smooth, if left alone they'll start to wrinkle creating a richer taste until it eventually goes bad when overripe. These fruit are usually left for the birds to eat so they don't fall off the tree and remain until the birds eat them over winter. Number 1 Nutmeg Fruit Bearing one of the most unusual fruits of them all, the evergreen nutmeg tree produces an oval shaped egg sized fruit which is home to the nutmeg seed which is what it's known for. Covering the seed is a bright red aerial or this bizarre waxy red flesh. This red flesh you probably have heard of. It's dried and made into a potent spice called mace which is also used in pepper spray. While we're talking about the hazards of the nutmeg fruit, nutmeg itself can be toxic or deadly if more than 4 teaspoons are consumed at once. Grown on what are known as the Spice Islands or Molucas Islands of Indonesia, this fruit will grow until it cracks in half revealing the red aerial and seed. The outer yellowish flesh that houses the seed or the pericarp is the actual fruit which has a bizarre mix of flavors. A strong nutty nutmeg taste, dash of bitterness, and a lot of dry mouth is what you can expect but locals don't usually eat it raw. Candied, dried, or mixed with sugar, the nutmeg fruit will suddenly taste much better like a delicious candied treat. Sometimes it's boiled to make nutmeg juice, blended in a smoothie, made into a jam, pickled, added to chutney, or shredded on savory dishes.